Hey everyone, my name is Kate Bernard. I'm a licensed clinical professional counselor as well as owner of Catered Consulting. I'm so happy to be sharing my first video with you guys today um, about sensory self-care. Um, self, sensory self-care is just one of the many dimensions of um, personal responsibility we've got to look after ourselves to make sure that we are doing everything we can to um, create an authentic life that is ours. Um, so I'm going to be talking about ways to deal with overstimulation. I'm going to be providing links to some of my favorite tools to help with this, um, as well as um, walk you through some tips and tricks that I've learned. And we're going to talk about, of course, essential oils and also journals. Um, so if you don't have them in front of you now, I encourage you to grab um, the oils that we gifted to you guys, as well as the journals. Um, might want to grab something to write with too, just in case you want to take notes as I'm talking. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, self-care. I'm sure all of you have heard that term in some way, shape, or form, because it's become quite the buzzword. You know, it is, of course, bubble baths and chocolate, and doing indulgent things that just feel good. But there's also aspects of self-care that are also that ugly side of self-care, which is paying bills and going to doctor's appointments that we might not want to go to. Maybe it's, you know, summoning the strength somehow and energy to go take a walk outside to enjoy some sunshine. You know, all of those things are self-care. But I'm going to focus on one dimension of self-care today in this video, which is um, sensory self-care. So... All right, so what is sensory self-care? All right, so sensory self-care is activating all of your senses, the five senses, sight, smell, touch, sound, and taste, right? So it's creating an environment that does not overstimulate. Um, have you heard the term sensory overload or overstimulation or things like that? Um, typically, you know, we have had an increase in this due to how quickly things move in modern society, all the responsibilities that we've got. Um, so this takes into account, you know, the importance of keeping some level of a tidy or organized living space, investing in clothes and shoes that fit and are comfortable, and, you know, really knowing your own triggers to what overwhelms your senses, because that's the hallmark of what causes this overstimulation is just that all of our senses are being activated in such a um, overwhelming way that our brain can't process, them all, can't process them all at once. If you think about using kind of an older computer and say you've got like 15 different programs running, or kind of a better example would be like a slower Wi-Fi speed and a bunch of devices connected where it's just overwhelming and things slow down. Um, but in our bodies, what happens with overstimulation is kind of that exact opposite. So when you're feeling overstimulated, you find that you might be cranky, you're irritable, you're having a really hard time focusing, you've got that urge to cover your, your eyes or your ears, to just block out sound, to just decompress, to just get rid of all of that noise, basically, right? Because there's always going to be noise around. So you could also be feeling overly excited or wound up. You can, you know, your nervous system might be activated and you might start feeling um, all of those classic symptoms of anxiety. And you also might have higher level than usual sensitivity to how things feel on your skin. This could be your tag could be bothering you in the back of your shirt or um, smells could be heightened. It's like at the same time that it slows your senses down, it also heightens your symptoms or sorry, your senses which can make you hyper aware of things that are going on, which in turn can lead to even fear about your surroundings. You know, that feeling of, I have got to get out of here, that type. That is what overstimulation is, which is why having some insight into what your triggers are for overload, as well as tactics to deal with it. Because, you know, what we're learning is you, know, you can't avoid life. It just keeps coming at you. Things are going to overwhelm you. So it's all about coming up with a very 
full self-care plan of tried and true tactics that can truly help bring you back to baseline, that can calm you down and make you feel okay, which is um, where grounding, the skill of grounding comes into place. So this is the first step um, in addressing your triggers and kind of bringing yourself down when you're all over the place. And what grounding means is that you are bringing yourself back fully into the present. So you're taking control back of all of those senses in a meaningful way. And one of the ways that you can do this are essential oils. Um, there are so many ways to use oils to help with grounding. Because if you think, you know, you can hold the essential oil bottle in your hand, which is you're touching something, you can smell it, and you're going to breathe, which can really activate those senses and kind of bring them back into, um, into yourself, right? Which is the whole point of grounding, is this idea of bringing yourself into the present. So if you've noticed, I have this um, lovely little light up machine going here behind me, which is actually one way that I use essential oils to promote grounding and um, environmental safety um, in my own space here. I just add water and a few drops of whatever essential oil I'm feeling that day and it just puffs it out into the air and it just provides a really um, holistic experience to keep me grounded throughout my day. Um, I got that particular diffuser from Amazon, but the one that I have been using in my office for a while, I, I actually got at Ollie's for $10 and it's pretty, it was a pretty solid purchase. Um, some other ways to use um, essential oils would be um, the diffuser bracelets. And you can purchase them with the oils already infused into the bracelet or you can make your own. And I'll be providing links to um, both methods. Um, the DIY is a pretty cool where you actually infuse um, the string that you're using to make the bracelet with the oil. That way it's always with you. Um, another way that you can use essential oils is very, I mean, this is probably the simplest way and one that I would certainly encourage you to do is literally just carry <clears throat> the essential oil in your purse. Take it with you wherever you go. If you're finding that you're feeling overstimulated and you just need a moment, you know, you just open and you try to deep, deep breath in for five seconds and then out. So... So five seconds in and five seconds out, and that can kind of reset your mind and you're activating the sense of smell and touch and breath and doing some breath work too, which is hallmark for grounding. So if you do decide to take this with you in your purse, like I'm encouraging you to do, please learn from my mistake and make sure that you keep it in a baggie um, because if this would happen to leak all over your purse, it can be quite an adventure to clean that up. So yeah, use a baggie if you're gonna carry these with you. Um, all right, so some things to be aware of with the oil too, kind of keep this in the back of your mind because you know, we are in allergy season, folks. It is raging out there not right now, right? So you may find that during certain times of year, certain scents are going to trigger headaches um, or even migraines if you get those. So make sure, you know, that you're testing out your oils before you're using them and you know pretty quickly if um, a scent is going to agree with you or not. So, um, yeah, that's just something definitely to be aware of. And one of, another way to use your oil, sorry, I forgot to mention this, um, which is awesome that the ones that we've provided you with are actually safe for skin use because they come with the roller ball on there. So one of the ones in particular um, is great for relieving tension, he tension headaches or if you carry a lot of stress in your neck. And, you know, because you're, if you're sitting in front of a computer all day or whatever your world looks like, you know, to relieve some tension, definitely you can, you like behind your ears here, dab it on your wrist, that way you can smell it when you need to. Um, that is also a really easy and simple way to um, keep your cool about you and keep you grounded if you need to be. 
And it can kind of, if you're going into a situation where you know is going to be overstimulating, you can kind of, <clears throat> kind of suit up for that using your essential oils that can provide that relaxation. So yeah, let's talk about the specific oils that you've got. Um, the Fresh here, Orange, Lemon, and Tangerine. It's a really light scent. I'd probably use this if I needed to wake up a little bit or I needed to feel inspired or if I was going to do something creative, maybe spend some time with my journal. This would be a good one for that. Um, the next one we got is Dream, which I love because it has orange, juniper berry, lavender, and chamomile, which all can prom promote relaxation and deep sleep. So this would be a great one to roll on before you go to sleep, maybe after taking kind of a long hot shower to get yourself, um, to bring yourself down from the day, to you know wash all that tension and um, whatever your day looked like off of you and then put some dream on and, and just take some time to yourself and really hopefully fade off into a good night's rest because that's very important, right? Um, the next one we got is Hetty's which I love this one for if you're carrying that tension or you have that headache. This has notes of rosemary, frankincense, and wintergreen. And any of the minty scents are actually really good for headaches. Mm -hmm. And I've had really good luck using um, essential oils to help with tension headaches. So that is also a great um, tool to have in your arsenal for sure. And the last one we've got is the Shield, which this is really cool because it's made up of rosemary, <laughs> rosemary, <laughs> rosemary, frankincense, eucalyptus, and lemon. And each of those um, ingredients that make up this blend actually have antibacterial qualities. So I would use this one before I would go in um, to public um, during flu season, and it's all particularly help helpful as we um, continue to live through this pandemic. Um, this is great um, for that, is literally putting a shield to ward off anything that could potentially make us sick. Um, yeah, so there are the oils that we've got. So I have been using essential oils for years now, and I found them to be very, very helpful to um, help with sensory overload. They're definitely one of the best tools in my arsenal for them. I have bought them <clears throat> from all different kinds of places, from Walmart, Young Living, Amazon, but honestly my favorite place lately to get them is TJ Maxx. Um, they've got a lot of different combinations and they even sell the diffusers there and I like that they're just so affordable there. Um, so that would be a good place to go if you wanted to kind of add to your collection. Whew, okay, so that is um, kind of a very quick summary of how you can use essential oils in your practice. So I'm going to move into journaling real quick to start talking about that, about how we can um, use journaling to also aid in our sensory self-care. Um, but as we go into that, just think about, I think maybe dream would be a wonderful one to use if I was going to be writing in my journal, maybe the last thing I do before I, I go to sleep, um, things like that. So think, so keep in the back of your mind, like if, if you, of things that you would journal about, what type of oil you think would go with that particular topic that you're writing about. Okay. So I love journaling. This is another thing that I do use in my personal self-care plan. It's so beneficial to your mental health. It can provide so much insight into yourself. In some ways, it can almost introduce yourself to yourself. And I think that's a really important thing to do as we go through life because we are always growing, always changing, always learning. And journaling can be such <clears throat> an amazing look into your world, especially if you um, make it a part of your routine for a while and you can go back over days, weeks, months, even years to see how you have evolved as a person. And it's really um, important to use any tool that we have to identify any, any unhealthy pattern of thinking um, because that way we can work to deal with it. We can figure out how to overcome it because if we don't know that something's a problem, we can't address it, right? Right, so journaling can be a great tool for that. 
Um, so some helpful hints to keep in mind as you go about journaling, you don't have to dedicate huge chunks of time to this. Even if you take three to five minutes a day to simply jot down a quick list of things, that can be beneficial to your health. Um, some people prefer pen and paper, and we did provide you with a, um, a pen and a whip, sorry, with a journal. And you'll notice that some of um, the pages are loaded with prompts already. And so some people have um, difficulty kind of just doing like a brain dump and they're really not sure what to write about. So what I did was I thought about the presentation or the topic that I'm talking about and I came up with some um, good questions to get you thinking so that you can kind of reflect um, on the information and see how you can integrate it into your life. So that's one way to do it. And they also sell um, many other guided journals are available to you if you're not sure that you can come up with topics. Um, Amazon is, has a plethora of um, options available to you. Um, so yeah, there's, there's that and then there's also good Pinterest and other online sites. You can actually Google journal prompts and they will come up with all kinds of them if you're having trouble figuring out what you would like to reflect on for the day. Um, and also, I know that a lot of folks are moving into a more digital journaling practice, <clears throat> which is also kind of cool, which it can be very simple. You know, you could just have a note ongoing on your phone that you add to um, daily or whenever a thought crosses your mind or something that you would like to think about or write about. Do that on your phone. Um, you can download one of the many digital apps that are available um, for free that are journaling apps where some of them you basically just check boxes and it can generate things for you. That way you are keeping track of your moods and your thoughts and um, different patterns and things like that. And then the other way, of, this is something kind of cool um, that I had someone tell me they were doing is they actually were sending emails in between accounts that they had to keep track of their thoughts. And I thought that was such a great illustration of the inner dialogue that we've all got because you're literally having a conversation with yourself. That was cool. Okay, so, but I want to talk to you about one of the simplest ways to start a journaling routine. And that is this idea of a gratitude journal. All right, so this is pretty awesome. So what research has shown us is that the simple act of writing three things a day that you are thankful for, that you're most grateful for that day, can actually improve your level of happiness and contentment with your life. Three things a day, quick little list, can make me happier. Sign me up. So. I have been, I got this cute little pack of three notebooks from Dollar Tree, and I've just been jotting down three things a day that I'm most grateful for, and it's really been great. It's, it's kind of, um, it was surprising to me how quickly it could turn my mood around, really. And it's another cool thing with that is that you do it for a while and you can kind of flip back and you can see all of these wonderful, amazing things that are present in your life that can be hard to find the joy sometimes. So that can be a good way to do. Um, yeah, so it's a definitely been a scary year for a lot of us, right? There's lots to be stressed about, to be scared about, to be angry about. But simply reminding yourselves of the simple joys and pleasure in life that's there it can turn things around and that's one of the most important takeaways maybe from this video that you can get is that life is about taking the good with the bad and taking the light with the dark and this is one way that those things can exist simultaneously because if you are you know pouring your heart out and expressing your emotions in a very thoughtful and meaningful journal post and then at the end you just simply jot down three things that you're grateful for you might find that it's a pretty solid emotional release and you're leaving that pain and those feelings, those intense feelings in that journal, um, but you are ending on a positive note because it's a pretty um, good life skill to start developing as soon as you can, um, especially <clears throat> as you continue to move through life. Um, <clears throat> all right, as I mentioned, 
the journal that I provided does have some prompts for you that um, further expand on topics that we've talked about. And then that rest of that journal is yours to fill as you please. All right. Okay. So that wraps up journaling. And if you think about creating a good safe space for yourself, using your essential oils, um, giving yourself that time and that space to release intention, intense emotions into a journal can really feel good to give yourself some time for that, you know, to invest in yourself in that way um, because you matter and your feelings matter and having a place to express that um, can make all the difference. All right, so I've hopefully offered a solid introduction to using essential oils and journaling to help look after yourself as far as your sensory self-care is concerned. Um, I'm hope, hopeful that you're able to interact with the material, that you'll look into the links and you'll find some type of practice that works well for you. Um, it was an honor to make this video. Um, please be kind to yourselves. And uh, I'm rooting for y'all, okay? All right, till next time.